Lesson four, I will be using meters to model the decomposition of one whole into hundreds. Today we're going to talk about a different kind of decimal. We've talked about tenths and we've talked about how a tenth in a decimal is exactly like a tenth in a fraction. Today we're going to talk about hundredths. Now in your math binder you're going to see this lesson four template, but I've actually changed my mind we're not going to use that today. We're actually just going to go right straight to our problem set. So I want you to go ahead and get out your problem set and I want you to write your name at the top and let's take a look at the directions. What is the length of the shaded part of the meter stick in centimeters? So this represents a meter stick and they have broken it down into parts. I want you to count how many parts you count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's think back to what you know about a meter stick. Do you know how many centimeters are in a meter? Well, let me tell you. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So if one meter is equal to 100 centimeters, then how, what would be the value or what would be the length of each of these boxes? In other words, if you took 100, and you put it into 10 equal parts, how much would be in each part? Well, there would be 10, right? So what's the length of the shaded part? Well, if we have one part shaded, this will be 10 centimeters. So if this is 10 centimeters, what fraction of a meter would be one centimeter? Well, how many centimeters are there in a meter? There are 100, so if I just have one, I would have one out of a hundred or one hundredth of a centimeter. All right, so let's take a look at C. In fraction form, express the length of the shaded portion of the meter stick. So look at what they've done here. They've broken this tenth down into ten parts. So if I had ten parts here, ten here, ten here, ten here, ten, 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 each of these little teeny tiny parts would have the value of one one hundredth. So if I have 10 of them, I would have 10 hundredths. So what do you notice about this part and this part? Well, I hope you say that they are equivalent. This is the same amount as this part. This part has been just been decomposed. So 10 hundredths is the same as 1 tenth. That'll be important later. Okay, in decimal form, express the length of the shaded portion of the meter stick. So if we have 10 one hundredths in fraction form, the way we would write that in decimal form is like this. 0 0.10, and that is read 10 one hundredths. What fraction of a meter is 10 centimeters? 10 centimeters would be... 10 out of 100, 10 hundredths. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. So if I have 1 tenth, 1 tenth is equal to 10 hundredths. 1 tenth is equal to 10 hundredths. 2 tenths is equal to 20 hundredths. Now let's take a look at this model. So use the model to add this, the shaded parts as shown. Write a number bond with the total written in decimal form and parts written as fractions. The first one has been done for you. So let's take a look at what they have here. So the big solid square would be one-tenth of a meter. And then these tiny ones would be hundredths. So they have three hundredths of a meter. So when you put one-tenth to three hundredths, you get thirteen hundredths of a meter, which is equal to thirteen hundredths of a meter. That is one tenth and three hundredths. Okay. Now you might be saying, but Miss Jennings, we can't add these because they have unlike denominators. But remember, one tenth would be the same thing as ten hundredths, and when you add this together, you get thirteen hundredths. That's why they're adding these tens and hundreds. They're really adding ten and a hundred, but it just kind of looks that way, okay? All right, so let's take a look at B. So we have two tenths, 
So let's write that like this, 2 tenths of a meter, and then let's count our hundredths, plus 1, 2, 3, 4 hundredths of a meter. So if I add 2 tens and 4 hundredths, that would be 24 hundredths of a meter. And as a number bond, that would look like this. We're going to do this in decimal form. So if I have 24 hundredths, let's write that as a decimal, that would be the same as 2 tenths, and I'm going to add that to 4 hundredths. And notice what 4 hundredths looks like as a decimal. So I have 2 tenths, 4 hundredths is equal to 24 hundredths. Okay, let's try this one. So I've got 1, 2, 3 tenths of a meter plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 hundredths of a meter. And then when I add that together, 3 tenths is the same thing as 30. So I've got 38 hundredths of a meter. And in decimal form, that looks like this. 38 hundredths, and now I've got 3 tenths, and I'm going to add that to 8 hundredths, and it gives me 38 hundredths. All right, let's take a look at number four. On each meter stick, shade in the amount shown, then write the equivalent decimal. So notice, first of all, we're shading tenths. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parts. So if I'm going to shade 8 tenths, I'm going to shade 8 whole boxes. So this would be 1 ten, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You kind of get the gist here. So here's 8 tenths. Now it says write the equivalent decimal. So if I have 8 tenths, I would write that like this, equals 0 0.8. That is 8 tenths. Now notice this does not say 7 tenths, it says 7 hundredths. So remember, 100 means you have to have 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So you have to take one of these tenths and break it down into 10 equal parts. That's kind of hard for me to do with this pen, so I'm going to use these lines like this. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, so I've got to come in here and I have to divide this section into 10 parts. So I've got to make these really skinny. So first I'm going to divide it in half, and then I'm going to divide each half into five parts. So these have to be really narrow. So I've got one, two, three, four on this side, so there's five, and I got a four on this side. One, two, three, four. So let's count and see if that's ten. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoo, that's pretty tiny. Okay, so we have to shade seven of those. Okay, so I'm going to have to get this really skinny one here, and I'm going to shade seven. So you're going to have to be really careful when you shade these to make sure that you're only shading seven, which is pretty hard to do. Okay, so that would be seven hundredths. And think about this. If I divided every one of these into ten parts, I'd have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That's why these teeny tiny ones are hundredths. Okay? Now let's take a look at C. So we're going to do 19 hundredths. So let's think about this for a minute. 19 has 1 ten and 9 ones. So I can go through here and just shade 1 ten. Here's 10. I don't have to do anything to it, just shade it. Now if I'm going to shade 19, I'm going to have to divide this next box into 10 parts. So let's do that again. We're going to divide this into 10 parts. So again, I'm going to get my little bitty teeny tiny lines here. Alright, we got to divide this into 10 parts. This will be easier for you to do with your pencil than it is for me. So I've got two parts. I'm going to go over here and draw four lines. One, 
two, three, four, and over here I gotta do four. One, two, three, four. So now I have 10, I know they're tiny. So now if I'm gonna do nine ones, I'm going to shade nine of these. So I'll basically I'm shading all of them except for one. Okay, so I have one ten and nine ones. And I just remembered that I didn't go back and write this as a decimal, did I? Okay, so let's go back and write this as seven hundredths. And then let's write this as nineteen hundredths. So this is what nineteen hundredths looks like. It has one ten and nine ones. So notice it does not have a zero there, okay? Draw a number bond, pulling out the tenths from the hundredths as in problem three. Write the total as an equivalent decimal. Okay, so we've got 19 hundredths. Let's write 19 hundredths, that's 0.19. So we're going to do tens over here, and we're gonna do ones over here. So how many tenths are in here? Well, there's one tenth, and nine ones, and look at how the nine ones looks, or nine hundredths, excuse me. I've gotta write 0 0.09. If you just put 0 0.9, you have one tenth and nine tenths, which does not equal 19 hundredths. Okay, let's try another one. So I've got 28 hundredths. So when I split that into tenths and hundredths, that's going to be two tenths and eight hundredths. Okay? All right, I want you to try C all by yourself. I want you to pause the video and try it by yourself. If you get stuck, you can always press play and I will help you. But I want you to try to see as much, do as much of this as you can by yourself. Okay, so hopefully you filled out some of this, if not all of it. So if I've got 7,700, so it's okay if you put a zero here, it's okay if you don't, I'm gonna put the zero. That's 7,700. So that's gonna be the same as seven tenths and seven hundredths, okay? Try D all by yourself. Go ahead and pause the video and try to do this by yourself and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna to check together. Okay, so hopefully you, pa you pause the video and do this by yourself. And now you can see here I have 94 hundredths and I decompose that as nine tenths and four hundredths. Together it equals 94 hundredths. Okay, so today we have talked about tenths and we have talked about hundredths. I think it's really important, let's come back and look at this for a minute. I think it's really important that you understand that this is a tenth. A tenth is actually bigger than a hundredth, just like a tenth in fraction form is bigger than a hundredth in fraction form. Because if I divide a pizza into ten parts, I'm going to get a whole lot more pizza than if I divide it into a hundred parts. That's why these hundredths are so smaller. We sometimes get confused in thinking, well, hundreds a bigger number, so it must be a bigger fraction, but in fact, it's actually the opposite. 